what I'm going to do is I'm going to really talk to you about some of the themes that are obsess me in my writing and my teaching here at London Business School. And I'm incredibly privileged, I have to say, to have the opportunity to teach the kind of uh, the off, slightly off the wall, very free stuff that I do teach. OK, so uh, so here we are. So let's talk about let's talk about uh, lives and how lives unfold. And I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to present you with a sort of a, a set of images, ideas, thoughts about life. And then I'm going to ask you to mix up in threes and to talk about your own lives uh, and your own and your own life story. So I, I use again. Um, I, I use this framework. Um, which are called destiny, drama, and deliberation. But uh, destiny merely means that your choices are not, limit, are not unlimited. It just says that you have things inside you and outside you that drive you. So the drama is, is stuff that happens that, you, that, is not, that you can't predict. You, know, you take a job and you're not exactly sure what you're buying into, but you're buying into it. Uh, you don't know what kind of boss you're going to get, you don't know what kind of colleagues you're going to get, you're not sure what opportunities you're going to get. Now, in between all of this, we have moments of deliberation. Now, this is, this is the kind of key question, really, is uh, how much do you choose and how much do you not choose? And it might be, you think, oh, I, all these incredibly important choices I've made, but actually, when you go through them, a lot of them are quite predictable. Let's hit a look at some life stories. How many people have been reading the Steve Jobs biography? I'm sure lots of you have read that. Interesting case, don't you think? Um, so, see, so the story, of the destiny for him was his adoption, and he was very lucky. You could say that was uh, a part of his destiny. Was his, he had very lucky with his adoptive parents, who were fantastic role models for him. A whole, the drama again, a lot of it involved relationships with uh, people like Steve Wozniak, uh, the original brains behind the Apple. Uh, and John Scully, who had a very interesting sort of relationship. And Scully, in the end, fired him from or was instrumental in getting him to leave his own company. He went to India. And that was a, a very deep learning experience for him, going to India. Uh, deliberation. Uh, he's choosing to go to a particular college, uh, Reed College, his work at Pixar, and his work with a man called, uh, an Englishman called Ives, around uh, il 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 issues of design. And it's really about this idea of self-regulation. It's the idea that, that all the most important things that happen to a person happen are battles within the self. Um, and uh, there are various elements of this. And let's take the Steve Jobs example. Um, at, at the top is what you can say is what you can call the executive ego. The executive ego is, I mean, if you look through the window of time and, your, and your, your eyes, as it were, that's what you're seeing. You're, you have a, we inhabit this thin channel of consciousness. We have to live, live through moment by moment. Uh, and within that consciousness, we have a degree of self-control, a far higher degree of self-control and choice than any other species. And we have it because we have some idea about ourselves. We have ideas about the future. We have ideas about the past. And we can contain those in the present. So this ego has to bear a tremendous weight, responsibility. And, and the responsibility that, that it bears is that you're kind of, in, in, in prehistoric times, you know, the gods took care of most of the, the stuff that happened, or the tribe took responsibility for things, uh, and the individual was left with relatively little to, um, to worry them. But now we live in an age, you know, where God is dead or on AWOL, um, uh, and um, you know, where people feel they're totally responsible for everything that happens to them. Uh, and if you're not having a good life, it's your fault, it's not God's fault, is what I mean. Now, this is influenced by your, your goals. So you have a bunch of goals, and those goals are one, some of them are biological. Uh, we modify some of them. Um, but those goals are ones that are, uh, sometimes are local and sometimes are deep. Sometimes we know what we're after, and sometimes we don't. Some of the goals are unconscious, and some of them are conscious. So this is an interesting problem about because how do we get control over what we want? And finally, there's your habits. And again, some people have more established routines and habits than others. And again, that's uh, this is this is one of the things you change. So here's the questions. Then, is you know what battles for self-control and discipline do you face? There are lots of ways of, of doing that. Uh, how have your goals and priorities changed? Are they changing now? How do you expect them to change in the future? 
is a question I should be asking you. How's your view of yourself changed? Is it changing? Your view of the world and how it works may change. That may be one of the most important things we try to do to people in business schools. We, you know, we don't have as an explicit agenda that we're going to change your view of yourself. That may be a byproduct of what we do. But actually what we do is to try to change your view of the world, to give you an enriched view of the world. And of course that may then drive quite different goals uh, and t take you to towards some quite different places. When I work with uh, leadership groups, this is a kind of a, a key point really, especially for, for people who are, trying to, who are trying to build a culture within an organization, because if they can't, or just within part of an organization, because if people can't say, haven't got a convincing account of why they are, where they are, and what they're doing, what they're doing, and why they've chosen to be in one position rather than to walk across the road to their competitors, then they can't have any credibility as a, as a leader. Sometimes, you know, some of the most important things are almost like happened by default, a decision that you hardly made, and all of a sudden you find, wow, you know, something life-changing has happened and I, and I didn't choose. Um, and, uh, you know, so, so then it's a matter of sort of seizing control back and saying, I'm, I'm actually going to drive this bus, not let somebody else drive it for me. So this idea of kind of like getting off the bus, yes. Yes. I mean, how, you know, how many people actually really do this and how realistic is it? Yes. Can, can I just say, I think if you're going to get off the bus, you don't need an MBA to do it. But it may help you. It can be handy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It can, it can be handy. Yeah. I think it can, it can be handy. So, so let me let's, let's pick on this gentleman's point because we all, we've all met people you've seen them after 20 years and they say oh I've changed enormously and after 10 minutes talking to them, they look different but after 10 minutes talking to them you realise <laughs> they haven't changed at all. So you know the, the there is a lot of stuff in your DNA that it does, that's not going to change. You know Steve Jobs, Dave, Steve Jobs, whatever. You know so, uh, but his life changed and you can make life changing choices. So you can, you can get off the bus and get on, the, on a better bus, if you like, a bus that's better for you. I think that's prob probably the, the point. So people, but what does change? You know, of all the things, all the things that, that don't change, yes, I agree, a lot of your abilities, your personality, your, even your values are stuff that I think is, is quite deep wired. Uh, but the story you have of you may not be. I mean, that's a story that can be rewritten, you know, so people do, you know, change their lives, they get religion or something, you know, and then they live a different life. They say they walk away from one life, say, you know, I'm, I got a different story of me. Now, that story of me has to incorporate your DNA, okay? It has to take account of the fact that you're a lazy, hot-headed, emotional, or whatever kind of person, you know, and says, this is the person I am, but, you know, I, I'm now going to view that in a different way, or I'm going to, I'm going to build a new narrative around it. I think this is, what, this is what's very interesting about how this story will drive your actions, and you can stop the story. So just um, finish with a, with a, a slide. Um, so there we are. Only the system that knows itself can control its own destiny. That's the point about this is, you know, you can get off the bus if you want, or stay on the bus if you want, you know, so, but you have to know yourself to do it, and I think that, that's what this process is, is about, really. So, there you are. So, thank you for being here, and let's move on to the next. Thank you.